Sometimes it happens that you get attached to a brand, to the point that it becomes a part of your life. You fall in love. It happens for cars, for motorcycles and for boats. I believe that most boat enthusiasts feel a shiver when they see the name Riva. It always happens to me. I always think I've become accustomed to the style, and instead, every new Riva model gives me new emotions. This is the Riva 76 Perseo. The designer for this first unit has chosen two stunning colours, and the stylist has invented their names, Moon Grey and Bright Black. Like the 68 Ego Super, the 88 Dominus Super and the 122 Mythos, the 76 Perseo has an enormous glass surface, over 40 square metres of crystal. The windshield has a central pillar, which is mandatory because you cannot make a glass surface bigger than this. 76 stands for feet in length, or 23.3 metres. Per prima cosa, la proviamo. First, let's try it, but stay there because then I'll show you and you will discover something that you've never seen. To move these 50 tons over the water, it makes me tremble. In the engine room, there are two 1,800 horsepower monsters, two 12 cylinder man engines. He who owns a boat of this size and class generally entrusts the command to a professional. It's a little like having a driver for your Rolls Royce. But why deprive yourself of the pleasure of being at the helm? A Riva gives an atmosphere so particular that you feel elegant even as the pilot. The German engineers from Mann are very precise and say that we should wait till the engine's cooling circuit has reached at least 40 degrees before accelerating. Here we are. Now we're off. Let's give some gas and take her to planing. As the propeller RPM increases, so does the speed. The pressure of the transom also increases and the hull raises out of the water. The trim stabilizes and the boat's efficiency improves. This is the minimum planing speed, 15.5 knots at 1,250 RPM. These motors have a high torque and are stable over a wide range from 1200 to 2100 rpm and it is in this range that fall the cruising speed. Let's see what they are. Our speed is 20 knots, the noise level is 65 dBA, excellent acoustic comfort. We are at 1480 rpm and the consumption is not high, only 120 litres for each engine. But the cruising speed can be higher. We should reach 2,100 rpm to see what its maximum is. Throughout this entire testing process, I have not actuated the flaps. We do not need them. The hull's angle of incidence is optimal at any speed. Punto verso sud, in pieno sole. We'll head to the south, in full sun, to enjoy the shimmering on the water and this Riva 76 Perseo. The hull is a very profound V-shape, and you can feel that on the helm because it holds course very precisely. But the angle of skid changes quite easily. You have to have a delicate touch. Eccoci arrivati al massimo regime di crociera, 2100 giri minuto e la velocità... Here we are at maximum cruising speed, 2100 rpm and the speed is 34 knots. This means the Riva 76 Perseo is also a very fast boat and long distances are shorter. E adesso le manette al massimo. Ma dobbiamo attendere qualche secondo... And now we'll go full throttle. 
but we have to wait a few seconds because the engines increase their RPM gradually. The electronic control makes sure that you do not get too much fuel into the combustion chambers so as not to flood it and produce too much smoke. Eccoci. Here we are, 2,340 RPM and 2,345 RPM. I would say that the engines are practically aligned and the speed is 37 knots. Yes, yes, 37 knots. Ora, se siete voi che dovete fare il pieno di carburante a questa imbarcazione, Now, if it's you who has to fill this boat with fuel, cover your ears for a moment because I'm going to give you the consumption at this speed, 350 litres an hour per engine, 700 litres an hour total. Adesso facciamo la prova che molti... Now, let's do a test that many shipping registers carry out to verify the stability of the boat. At full speed, hard starboard. The boat turns gently. The turn is not too sharp, but instead quite soft. Obviously, in making the evolution you lose speed, but a good skipper keeps the course and does not swerve in the middle of the sea. And then, as soon as the rudder returns to centre, the revolutions climb once again. Now I slow down and we enjoy the best part. I'll show you the exterior and interior of this Riva 76 Paseo. The open space is nearly six meters long and overlooks the outside through windows bigger than you've ever seen and a small aft window that we can open. The dining area seats eight people with L-shaped sofa, table and four more chairs by Poltrana Frau. To the starboard there's a living area with a sofa and coffee table. A yacht of this size can have up to five cabins, but not a reaver. Here there are only three because the owner's cabin is extended to take up half of the habitable space available below deck. Obviously the suite overlooks both the port and starboard sides. The bed is nearly centerline positioned slightly starboard to give space to a comfortable sitting room with adjoining walk-in closet. A cabinet with desk area and vanity runs under the windows, symmetrical on both sides. The bathroom has a double sink and a long shower, with seats in of marble, like the floors and sinks. Un bagno di gran lusso. The bathroom is very luxurious, but such a slim mirror. Below deck, other than the owner's suites, there are two cabins. The VIP cabin in the bow with a queen bed and a double twin cabin on the starboard side, both with their own bathrooms. The lower deck also has the kitchen because Riva dedicates its main deck exclusively to its guests, whether they are seated at the table or getting comfortable in the living area. The furniture reflects the essences, the fine leathers, the lacquered surfaces and the steel, which always distinguishes Riva furnishings. Further, they have added mirror surfaces and marble, which is usually unfavourable because it's so heavy, but here it's so beautiful and on a 24 metre yacht it's fine. The cockpit incorporates a concept of absolute comfort thanks to its large space. At its center, a sofa becomes a sun deck by adding an extension. Next to the door, there's a table with sofa and in addition, if required, folding chairs. The swim platform immerses itself completely to become an underwater surface to relax on or which to easily climb back on board or even launching and hauling the tender that is kept in the garage.
This grid hides the cleats and winches to preserve the beauty of the hull without taking convenience from the technical area. Grids on the sides of the hull are used to ventilate the engine room and add a touch of sportiness, as well as recalling the family feeling of Riva. Guardate che meraviglia questo profilo così pulito, elegante. Look how wonderful this profile is, so clean, elegant, and also crossed by a silver band that is a safety lifeline. Is not enough, they lowered the gunwale to give way to the light entering the hall and have maintained this protection. Reaver is not going to use the most common solutions like everyone else does, so in light of this, the aft entrance gate retracts into the structure. The forward sun deck is located as far forward as possible, and near the windshield there is a sofa that becomes a sunbathing surface. The technical area for manoeuvring is hidden by a door, so as not to be in the way. This slanted profile manages to hide the flybridge. You only see it if you climb up. The sun deck is surrounded by a carbon handrail. At the bow is the sofa that, with extensions, becomes a sunbathing surface. Here below, there is the steering position of the Sport Fly. And from the top of this flybridge, I tell you that this not only ends the test, but also ends the program. We are done. There are no other boats to try. I'm staying here.